Hello, Daz Studio community. This is not from this world, and I want to welcome you back to another one of my videos on using Daz Studio. Today, I want to talk about the denoiser option. And I have learned through many of you, but also through some trial and error, that the denoiser is something that is very, very useful. So today, I want to kind of dive into the Daz Studio denoiser. Now, there are other denoisers that uh, you can use, and I have had some suggestions on other denoisers that uh, some of you claim are better than the Daz Studio denoiser. For example, there is a denoiser through NVIDIA, called Declan Russell and uh, you can download this and use some what looks like DOS scripts and denoise your image with this. So thank you to Chad Johnson for that recommendation. Never Enough Guitars recommends Topaz Labs and Topaz AI denoiser. Now these are all options but we're not going to talk about these today. I've also mentioned that GIMP also has a denoiser. And I've shown you in some other videos how we can use the GIMP denoiser to freshen up our images. I'm sure Photoshop and some other programs have it as well. But today I just want to talk about the Daz Studio denoiser because with every new release of Daz Studio and every update, the denoiser has just gotten better and better and better. So it is really worth your time to play with this denoiser. And I think at the end of this video, we're going to see an incredible hack with the denoiser where you can make some quick renders. I have been playing with this for a week now, and I am thrilled overall with how the denoiser can speed up renders without decreasing quality. So let's get into it. All right, now, first of all, I wanna make sure that we are all familiar with what the denoiser does. The denoiser is going to smooth or eliminate noise in our scene. Now, I made a quick render of Milica here in this pose with her in her apartment. And I wanted to just show you this as an example of what noise is. So when you look at noise, you're looking at all of this fuzziness, all of these um, kind of speckles, dots, everything just, you know, didn't render all that great. So what we can do with the Daz Studio denoiser is we can set a render up, render it, and at the end of the render, we can get rid of this noise. Those other products are gonna be something that you would use after you've rendered. So for example, if I wanted to use the Declan Russell or Topaz AI denoisers, I would wanna use it on this image that I already have. In Daz Studio, we can do this as we render and that's what's super cool about this now to find it you're going to go to render settings and when we click on render settings i always go to all so i can kind of scroll through all of the different options now the denoiser is going to be in this purple area where there's purple bars and you can see post denoiser available and it's always defaulted as off so we can turn this on and we want to also turn on the post denoiser enable can turn that on and then below that there's a third bar that says post denoiser start iteration we can choose where we want the denoiser to become active that also relates back up here to our max samples in the max samples, that is the number of iterations that we're going to allow during the render. Now, I have these cranked up. Originally, I would just crank up my max samples and max time so that 
my image could render completely without manipulation. What's really cool about the denoiser is you don't have to do this. And I've learned very quickly that my max time, it doesn't even matter. I can set it for, you know, like an hour, 3,600 seconds. And then my max samples, we can drop down really low. So we can drop it down to like 500 or 800 or 1,000 in some cases. Then what we want to do is we want to match the number that we put into our max samples into the denoiser option. Okay, so let's run a test. I have our max samples down to 100 to make this quick. And then I also changed the post denoiser to 100. And we're gonna run a render of Milica here just to see what is gonna happen with the denoiser. Now, what's important to understand is if I set the max samples to 100, it's gonna end the render at 100 iterations. So our time really doesn't matter anymore. So you're gonna see this as we render. So I'm gonna render this up and Daz Studio is processing the iRay, and you'll see that, and then you'll see iterations. So see iRay is getting retrieved, and then we have iterations. So what should happen here is, this happened really fast, but you can see that the denoiser ran and got rid of any of our noise in the scene. And this occurred in a matter of seconds. You can see how fast it is. That is what's so cool about the denoiser. Now I have noticed a few issues with the denoiser. First of all, it works really good with simpler scenes. But the more complex or the larger your scene is, the harder it is for denoiser to work. It also works the best with Daz Studio 4.22. So if you're using a previous version, you're not gonna have the same results that I am having with 4.22. I know a lot of you are hesitant to upgrade to 4.22, but I think at this point in time, it's probably the best option. I think all the bugs are being worked out with it. I know a lot of you are like, I'm going to stick with 4.21 and not go to 4.22, but I think it's time to move to 4.22. There's just so many more advantages to it um, as we go along. So as you can see, this does smooth the picture out. So it does get rid of some detail. The denoiser kind of just blends things together. Now this looks pretty good to me. Uh, Milica looks as cute as ever in this render that just took a matter of seconds, but it's not gonna be as sharp as it would be if you didn't use the denoiser. I've also noticed that kind of like when we are rendering and you've rendered consecutive pictures multiple times, you know how the render slows down and you have to reboot Daz Studio and refresh it to get the GPU to work. If that happens with the denoiser, I've noticed that the denoiser will just not work. It, it'll render and at the end of the render, there's no denoiser. So you have to have that GPU enabled. So to get around this, you may need to disable your CPU. Although I've heard things about that, that it, that doesn't help or it does help. So I'd like some insight on that a little bit, but you need to have your GPU running in order for denoiser to work. I've also had some issues with the denoiser and render queue. I use render queue all the time, but I've noticed that it only will use denoiser for the first scene you have set up. It will do multiple cameras and denoise the multiple cameras, but if I set up, and I learned this the hard way, and I need to know a way around this, so if you can help me, please let me know. But if I render multiple scenes, the denoiser will work for the first scene, and then when it changes to the second scene, I don't know if my GPU is dropping out or what the deal is, but it will not denoise 
the second, third, fourth scene that I have set up in the render queue. So I'd love help on that because I find it annoying. I've noticed with some simpler scenes it seems to work, but with more complex scenes it drops out that denoiser at the end. I had a bunch of um, noisy images that I had to redo because of this. So I'd really like to know your opinion on that. Now here at the end, I told you that I would show you a hack with the denoiser that is gonna greatly speed up all of your render times. And it's brought to us from my last week's video on viewer thoughts. And if we select it, down here in the comment section, I had two patrons that really just helped me out. The first one is from Paragon North, and he talks about the denoiser and using the pixel filter as well as the different filters in our render settings. And then Neil Roy gave me a list of settings to make in your render settings that just has changed everything. So I wanna show you this, and this credit goes to both Paragon North and Neil Roy. I am not taking credit for it, but it is the bomb. And this is how you can set it up. So what Neil Roy suggests is that we go into our render settings, we set up our max samples for whatever we want. So just for the sake of it, um, he kind of has a little formula. He says he starts at a default of 400 iterations, and then he raises it about 200 for every extra character. So if he has three characters, he's gonna go up to 600 iterations. I kind of played around with this and kind of just decided on a set number of like 800 for most of my renders, but uh, you can definitely play around with that. So we're going to take and we're going to set, for this example, let's set our max sample just to 200. All right, so he says to set that to 200. The max time makes no difference at all, but he says to turn off our render quality. So we're going to just turn that off and that just gets rid of time as an issue. It's only going to worry about the iterations. Then we're gonna scroll down and make sure our post denoiser is on with the post denoiser enable on. And then we're gonna match up this post deno uh, denoiser start iteration to the same thing as we did before. So we're gonna set that up. And then in our comments from last week, Paragon North kind of gives us this information about filters, and he says in his mention here that the Mitchell filter is going to give us softer images, and the and I guess it's called the Lanzos filter is going to make more sharper images. So in our Daz Studio, we're going to change this. It's defaulted to Gaussian. We're going to just jump it down to this Lanzos, all right? And then Neil Roy says to take your pixel filter radius and drop it down to one to keep that producing a sharper image as well. So once we have this set up, we can render pretty much any image we want, whether it takes a long time, very quickly. I have to say this has worked wonderful for me. I was rendering without this setting. Using the default render settings with the render quality and the time, I would emphasize that a lot. And I had scenes that would render 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour, some of them two hours to render one picture. And now with this setting set up this way, they render much quicker. I think the renders that I was doing that took two hours took less than 20 minutes. And these are pretty complex renders, but it would render and then it denoises at the end and you get an image that is just as good as if you just waited with your time for minutes and minutes or hours to get the same render. So it works wonderfully. 
All right, so let's render this up and see what happens. Okay, so we got this render going. Now I did up the iterations to 200, so this is gonna take a little bit longer than that first one. But with everything set up, we should get a nice render. We got some noise and we're rendering. What's cool about this is when you have the quality turned off, it runs its percentages off of the iterations. So boom, now we've got a really good picture in a fraction of the time. I don't, I mean, you just saw that in real time. I did not speed up the video at all. That was actual render time. Very, very handy. You are rendering in seconds to minutes with this setup. So I've got to say thank you, Neil Roy. I mean, you know, this is a community. We are helping each other. It's awesome, man. I have learned so much from you guys, probably more than you've learned from me, honestly. And I really appreciate that. I, I can't do this without you. It's a small channel, but I feel like we really do help each other out. All right, I got another camera set up and we're going to make a thumbnail for this video on denoising and I like close-ups of Milica because she's just so cute so we're gonna do another render for the thumbnail and then we're gonna call this good I will probably experiment with some of those recommendations that you all made for outside denoising you know things like the Declan Russell and the Topaz AI and put that in a future tutorial for you. So we're gonna render this beautiful picture up, use it as the uh, use it as the thumbnail, and until next time, have a wonderful day. <laughs>